Chicago's predominantly African-American Presbyterian churches have long been a vital part of the city and the Presbytery of Chicago. Associated Urban Ministries is bringing those churches together to fight for social justice, help those in need, and engage youth in ministry. To learn more, let's welcome Reverend Alvin Bridges, pastor of Cornerstone Presbyterian Church, mm -hmm. Reverend Eddie Knox, pastor of Pullman Presbyterian Church, and Danielle Adams, a member of Pullman. Can you explain to us, Reverend, what exactly um, Urban Ministries is? Well, Associated Urban Ministries, uh, with all credit, started under the mentorship of uh, Reverend Alvin Bridges many years ago. Uh, it has uh, been vital. I remember coming uh, into seminary and Reverend Bridges was a mentor in many of the churches on the uh, African-American churches on the south side of Chicago were needing people to preach in. Um, memberships were down and Reverend Bridges took many of the seminarians who were over at McCormick Theological Seminary and began to have us learn how to cut our teeth in those pulpits by preaching. I remember he sent me over to Seventh Presbyterian Church and, and uh, we just started, uh, I along with uh, many other uh, young men and young women at that time who were in seminary. Um, Associated Urban Ministries has grown and developed. I am uh, fortunate to be a part of this and have been a part of it for many years. I look at our Presbyterian history and as Presbyterians, we believe that we are connected. We have a heritage of being connectional people that had its foundations and movement from the East that uh, moved across the West. Mm -hmm. And when we came to look at uh, Associate Urban Ministries, uh, Reverend Bridges and the several other pastors, uh, Pastor Damon, Pastor Gould, um, Pastor Saunders, Pastor Myrie, all of us began to really sit down and try to resurrect a kind of way that would have us embrace the connectional system and to do good within our communities and our neighborhoods that uh, continue to need care and service for our people. One of the things that we were concerned about was how can we uh, stop sending our young people to prison campus and redirecting them so that they could move to college campuses. And uh, uh, so we brought together a group of young people from our churches and they went to work. And we simply told them, we will be here to support you and give guidance when needed for the direction that you choose to go in leading us to do effective ministry in the church, in the city, in our neighborhoods. What kind of ministries do you actually do through the church for the neighborhoods in the community? You might know some of those things, <laughs> Danielle. Well, I can speak a little bit about that. Um, as far as the youth ministries, well, at Pullman we do have youth groups and many of the connecting churches do have youth groups as well. But one event that we do have, and we've had it, this will be our fifth year in this, this current year, will be um, what's called Soul Jam. And it's, it's, it's youth made, if I can mark that, it's youth made, but supervised by the, the older adults. And from the inception, it's been just our ideas, youth coming together from the different churches, and, and putting on a two-day event, which mixes both a, a component for more so fun-oriented, you know, going out and just fellowship, mm -hmm. um, as well as a church component where we actually have worship service. Okay. So it's been interesting, it's been fun, it's been a challenge as well, mm -hmm. but since 2007 we've had this event. So. What's, a, what's one of the most memorable moments you've had from oh. some of these events? One of the most memorable moments, in my opinion, is having, having youth come up and, and come to the pulpit and basically kind of claim their faith. The altar call. 
So it, it, not necessarily an altar call. Not the call I mean, it's it's a call, but it, it's open. It opens oh, okay. up the doors, and and the event itself, though we put it together as seven churches, it's open to the community. So it's it's not you know keeping anyone away. But what are some of the challenges that this program has uh, been meeting? One of the challenges is always funding as anything yeah. else. Uh, in, <clears throat> but we've, had, we've been involved in a partnership uh, from our national church, the uh, Presbyterian Church USA, mm -hmm. along with our regional governing body, the Senate of Lincoln Trails, and our local body, the Chicago Presbytery, along with the, uh, the member churches. And all of us chip in uh, through uh, funding sources and dollars to make sure that uh, we can adequately do the things that are needed within uh, this program. I think uh, memorable for me uh, really was last year hmm. when we combined two of the events that we were doing, an event for Pentecost Sunday and the Soul Jam, which is the event uh, Danielle has spoken about. When we combine those uh, with combined workshops for youth as well as adults, mm -hmm. and then it culminated in a worship service uh, where it was intergenerational and uh, uh, interracial. It, it was just a wonderful event. And we had uh, youth that mimed. Uh, we had liturgical dancing. Mm -hmm. We had all forms of uh, people within the pulpit from young and old alike, and it was Choir. culminated, choirs, joint choirs, and it culminated with a, a sermon from Reverend Patrick Damon of Sixth Grace mm -hmm. Presbyterian Church. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and, uh, and people throughout the, all of our churches, that's all we were talking about is, oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> well, I, you did mention, Reverend, um, how there was low attendance in the beginning and there, there was a problem. Do you see that now having a solution with this urban ministries, associated urban ministries? Do yes, you see well, that? It's, a, it's a new innovation, not just with our youth, but with our adults mm -hmm. who uh, found uh, a, a sense of reaching out hope. See, we are a group of churches that are some of the oldest Presbyterian churches in the city, or some of the oldest Protestant churches in the city, um, that's been struggling for years. But now the new claim in terms of reaching out for our youth, our churches are growing with young people, and, uh, and they're bringing their families into the church. And, and like the Soul Jam event, the Pentecost event, it was not just uh, a ministry with in-house. Mm -hmm. right. It's reaching out where they are bringing in Family, uh, friends, people from everyone. all walks of life. Right. Yes. And it's amazing to see the kinds of workshops that these young people engage in. You know, uh, HIV, AIDS, and mm -hmm. hunger, uh, housing. Um, How to put on a worship service. Yes. Do you, I, I'd like to ask <laughs> both of you, do you both feel the difference from when you were younger coming up in the church? Do you, do you feel that the youth today have a lot more problems to deal with and a lot more distractions that keep them outside of our churches and keep them away mm -hmm. from their faith? I think, I think it's at a higher level. Mm -hmm. I think in every age bracket there are always issues, but today it's uh, more demanding uh, for the young people, they have uh, the, all of the technological things that uh, keep them uh, very busy. Uh, they're texting, they're uh, on Facebook, and so they're forever moving. What we find is that as programs like ours is helping them to build relationship with one another right. one -on -one. outside the technological Personal. field. And uh, so they're able to they have to talk rather than the text. Right. It has been an honor and a joy to have this discussion with both Reverend Bridges and Reverend Knox. Thank you so much, Danielle, for being Thanks. here. I'm Tamara Love for Different Drummers. Keep the faith. <laughs>